Hi guys, Anna here, and in this video we're going to discuss glycolysis, which is part of respiration, and then I'm going to do another video on link reaction and the rest of the stages, and hopefully simplify it for you. So please grab a paper so we can start going through it together and you can take the notes. It's very important in this topic to draw loads of diagrams, as it will help you to memorize it for your exam. So let's jump right into it. So respiration is an essential reaction in order to release energy in the form of ATP, which can be used for many cellular processes such as active transport, exocytosis, endocytosis, nervous conduction, muscular contraction, etc., etc. And you do need to know all of these examples I've just mentioned. Okay? Never ever say produce energy, <laughs> which is obviously not allowed, and it's basically, no, we can't produce or destroy energy, but you can say release energy in a form of ATP or produce ATP as a uh, function of respiration. And here is the equation, so basically copy this over, C6H12O6 plus 6O2 goes to 6CO2 and 6H2O, and in brackets you can put energy, and just, you know, the word equation is just below here. Okay. Great. So let's jump into glycolysis. So the easiest way to learn this, guys, is to kind of think and draw diagrams in terms of the number of carbons. So what we're going to do uh, in a moment, we're going to draw this out, but just know that glycolysis, it happens as a part of aerobic and anaerobic respiration, which again, I'm going to make a separate video on this, and it occurs in the cytoplasm. Right, so the way to learn this topic is to draw all the diagrams and using circles as, for example, which will represent, so each single circle will represent a single carbon atom, okay? So I've just drawn six carbons, glucose. Obviously, this is not a structure of glucose. I know it's cyclic, guys, and you know that as well. But for simplification, we'll just draw it like this. So we start with a molecule of glucose, which is six carbon molecule. And basically what will happen to this glucose molecule, it will gain two phosphate groups, and this is, I've represented them here in the pink color, and the molecule will be called hexose biphosphate. Uh, if you do AQA, guys, you do not need to know the hexose biphosphate, but the rest of the exam boards, you do need to learn that name. And what you need to know, guys, is that the addition of those two phosphate groups make glucose more reactive, and it makes it more unstable, okay? And the two phosphate groups, in this case, they come from two ATP molecules that have been donated. And because of these two phosphate groups making it more reactive, this molecule is now going to basically break into two three-carbon molecules and a phosphate group each called triose phosphate. Okay, so let's just write the name on the side so you know of this. And it's simple, guys. Making it unreactive and it just breaks it down. And again, as you can see, learning respiration here, we're actually following the number of carbon molecules. So um, for all the exam boards, you need to know it as triose phosphate. But if you're doing, guys, at Excel, you need to learn it as glycerate 3 phosphate. So just please note down depending on what exam board you do. Okay? So... I want you to copy now kind of um, that there will be a further conversion into the other three carbon molecules here, and we're going to be making pyruvate. But because it's the most important stage of glycolysis, I want to take it to the next page, and we're going to go through it and draw it properly out now. So, again, guys, so triose phosphate, so a three carbon molecule with a phosphate attached to it, to each one of the molecules, and then it will be converted to a pyruvate molecule that will then be used in the link reaction that we can cover in the next video. So the conversion of triose phosphate to pyruvate is actually an oxidation reaction. So it means that triose phosphate is going to lose a hydrogen that then can be picked up by a different molecule. So because of this, guys, basically there is a molecule called coenzyme and it's called NAD that will be able to pick up this hydrogen. And when it does, we call it reduced NAD. And for some exam boards, it's called NADH. You're all right to use that. I think, I believe this was OCR, guys, but again, you just need to double check on your specification specifically. So each conversion is going to basically produce redu two reduced uh, NAD molecules, so one per triose phosphate. And at the same time, this conversion from triose phosphate to pyruvate is also going to be producing two ATP molecules per one triose phosphate molecule. You might be then asked, 
what are the net products of glycolysis reactions? So let's just kind of review this. So per one glucose molecule that we started with, we're going to produce four ATP molecules in the glycolysis uh, reaction. However, we also use two ATP molecules to phosphorylate the initial glucose. So therefore, we're going to produce two ATP molecules. We're then going to produce two reduced NAD molecules. And we're going to produce two pyruvate molecules. And we're going to then, guys, in the next video, see how all these products are important in the link reaction and the other subsequent stages of the respiration. This is it for glycolysis. Please press the thumbs up for this video. Support this channel by subscribing. Recommend this to your friends, guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.